So today we are going to talk about these guys. The main guy was Cora. His name was Cora. He was like a part of this family that when God led this whole this whole community called the Hebrew people, we call them the Israelites. They lived in Israel because Jesus named Abraham Israel. Mm -hmm. um, these are all his grandchildren, and there's a mass amount of them. They stayed in Egypt for 400 years, and then God gave Moses the ability to actually lead them out. He was Moses was raised in the palace in Egypt. Everybody knew who he was. He was schooled in the finest education there in Egypt, and then the Lord led him out to the wilderness for 40 years, and uh, he told him about these people. He had such a plight and a heaviness in his heart for these people. He found out they were his people that he was born from, and the Lord ended up giving him the Ten Commandments while they were in the wilderness because they were becoming separated from, from the rest of the world. Every tribe, every person in the world was at that time suffering from demonic oppression, sickness, and death. And the Lord was giving these people a standard to live by so that they no longer had to be oppressed by those things and they could have God as their leader. He actually, at night, he would manifest himself as a pillar of fire, fire by so night. Cool. And during the day, he was a huge cloud pillar. They could actually go into the shade of it. It was that, uh, like, it could actually, like, shade them from the sun. That's how thick that cloud wow. was. And when it started moving, they would pack up their tents and they would start moving. But in the middle was called the tabernacle. This is the, and they had like a tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. And Moses would speak to God face to face there. So the Israelites, the Hebrew people, they would see God manifesting himself. They saw, we talked about the plagues that happened in Egypt and how he was able to break down the entire system in Egypt that left the Israelites in bondage that separated two classes of people where one was a slave class and one was a ruling class. And they thought because of their gods, they were able to enslave these people. And God said, no, I'm, I'm taking them out now. And so these were the Ten Commandments that they were to live by. So um, last week, were you guys here? Raise your hand if you were here. Do you remember Pastor Kelly talking about the 12 spies? Yeah. Caleb, Joshua, and 10 other guys went into the place where all of them were headed. They were all crossing the wilderness to go to this place called Canaan. And in Canaan, there was actually some massive dudes that were like 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall, and they had built homes and dug vineyards and built all this stuff that was way bigger in comparison to us. So they felt like grasshoppers. And um, as they were going through Joshua, because this was after, like I went back and did some review. Moses at this point, um, when they went to go view the land, Joshua was the one leading them and they were taking people out like the Lord was actually having them take over people's cities and live there instead and the Canaan land is their promised land that they were going to and when they spied out the land they came back it says with an evil report sometimes all evil means is earthly like earthly wisdom because even Jesus said you fathers being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how do you think how much more do you think your Father God will give you a good gift if you ask him for it? So it's just earthly, earthly wisdom. It's like not as high of a wisdom as God's. It's an evil report. So according to their senses, what they could see, what they could touch, taste, and feel, because remember the grapes were as big as their heads, right? Watermelon size like the, the grapes were massive. Well, they, it took two men to bring a cluster of grapes back just to prove to the people what kind that of stuff so they were cool. dealing with there. And that. so they were afraid. They didn't respond with, yes, God is on our side. They responded with terror. And Joshua and Caleb told them about the land, that it was good. But then the other ten spies said, we're grasshoppers. They're going to eat us alive. And, and Joshua, after he got them to calm down, because the people it said they threw dust in the air. They ripped their clothes. They were crying. We're not going to go into this land. You brought us out of Egypt for no reason, blah, blah, blah. And Joshua said, no, they are bread for us. They're not going to eat us. We're going to eat them up. Why? Because of God. Not because they're 12 foot tall and all this stuff. And so there was a guy named Korah. They, they had been brooding. That means over time they had been thinking about some things. All of them agreed as they spoke side conversations throughout the days here and there. And they got a, a chip on their shoulder. or They became angry with Moses. He was the leader. 
And they said, you brought us out into the wilderness to die. So thanks a lot. We're going to turn around and we're going to select a few people. We're going to go back to Egypt because that's all they knew. Think about it. Like 400 years, that's longer than like, think about how far back George Washington is. That's a little over half of that time. That's like 260 years. That's like so long ago. Like they, for generations, they that's all they know is Egypt. And they at least they were like, we had leeks and onions by the Nile that we were free to eat. We could make bread, blah, blah, blah. But that was not the level of life that God had for them. He actually wants all of us to live a good life, but he was using these people and separating them out to show them what the possibility was because he was going to send like how you've heard of reincarnation coming back as another thing. That's not a thing, but incarnation is. He was going to send his, his son's spirit into this earth with human flesh. It says he put on human flesh and became like us. He could have become like any creature, but he was coming to redeem us. And so he was going to send his son through this family. Think about it. If, if the years go by, all of your grandchildren will become a mass amount of people like this. And he picked one guy, remember, that made a promise with him. He said, you're going to have a son, and that is Israel, which is all these people. So back to the story. Korah, he had two friends, Dathan and Abiram, and they were uh, a part of the Levite tribe. All of these are different tribes that were separated. There was like the 12 sons of Israel or of uh, Abraham, right? Or what was his name? Jacob. 12 tribes. The yeah. 12 tribes of Jacob. Um, they had all different names and all of them had their own sets of families. Well, the entire group of the Levites, uh, the Levites, they did not get to have any land when they got into the promised land. Everybody had a section that belonged to them that was called their inheritance, but the Levites, their portion and their section was the Lord. Everything they depended on the entire community to bring them food because Anything that they gave to God, the Levites got to get. They didn't have to work for it because they worked in the tabernacle. They got set up. So all of that to say, what these, were they doing in all the of, tabernacle? Well, all of these guys, uh, including Abijah, Dathan, and Korah, were special. Um, and these are their family members that are falling into the pit, which I will explain in a second. But they came up to Moses and they said, you, it said uh, prominent men in the community that were a part of the Levite community. So everyone looked up to them. It's like how you would look up to Pastor Brian. All of these guys, uh, that is who Dathan was. That's who Abijah and Korah, but Korah was the main one. That's why it's called the Rebellion of Korah. Um, he's like, you know what? This is not right. Uh, Moses brought us out here. This is not working out. We're not going to go into Canaan land because those people are massive. We're never going to be able to get it. And so let's go back to Egypt. We'll just lead you back. And so um, what they did, what the Levites did in the tabernacle is they ministered to the Lord. So I believe they would fill, keep the oil full. They would like leave out the shoe, it's called shoe bread. But it's like there's all these different things that they would do. And they didn't have to work like everybody else. Whenever you have to go kind of like hunt and gather for your own food. All the people that did that stuff, um, like manna, for example, the the Levites, the entire tribe of the Levites, people would bring them food. Sorry, I just spit. Uh, people would just bring them. So like they got stuff. It seems like they got it for free without working, but they were really working for God. And so there's almost like a sense of importance that would come on people like this because they are special. They're like set apart. Now, didn't they... Weren't they jealous of Moses they being were. able to talk to God? That's what I was about to say. Okay. So Korah comes up to Moses with Dathan and Abi Abiram, and he says to Aaron, was uh, basically because um, back, if you remember about Moses, he stuttered. When that bush was on fire, appeared to be, God said, go deliver my people. He said, I can't speak without stuttering. And so miraculously, coming out of Egypt to meet, um, to meet Moses in the wilderness, was his brother Aaron, which he didn't even grow up with. He grew up in the palace. And he said, he's going to be your spokesman. He's going to speak for you. And so Aaron is now, he was a Levite as well. So was Moses. And uh, Aaron was the head priest over all the priests. And they had a chip on their shoulder or they had a beef with Aaron and with Moses. Because they said, who are you guys to exalt yourself as princes above these people? And they said, aren't we all special? Can't God speak to all of us? So why are you guys saying that you're, we're going to go into this promised land? We want to go back to Egypt. They were actually upset 
A lot of us want to rebel against authority sometimes, and we're encouraged to do so, especially in our culture. They say question authority, which, you know, if you're dealing with man-made laws like our game earlier, um, sometimes those are made to just control people, and you should question and have critical thinking for yourself, why am I doing this? You shouldn't just, you know, go on blindly with things. But when it came to this group of people, they saw the, the pillar of fire by night. They saw the pillar of cloud by day. They knew God spoke to Moses. And they knew God spoke to Aaron because they saw it in front of them. And God had done all those things to deliver them from Egypt. But in their minds, they didn't see it as a good thing. They saw it as a scary thing because it wasn't possible for them to fight those giants. And they were just like, this is impossible. They were so beat down inside of their soul and in their heart that they didn't see it as a possibility. And they weren't trusting God. So they weren't even really mad at Moses. They were actually mad at God because they're like, this isn't possible. Like, they weren't believing God. And so they came against him. And it was almost like a, we're right because more of us agree. And just the two of you are wrong because you're trying to lead all of us and none of us want to follow you. And so they're like, okay, we're going to have basically a standoff. And the way they would they would uh, worship the Lord, they had these like censers. They were like these like, I guess, basins with a chain. And they would put coal in there and light it on fire. It was like incense to the Lord. And they would worship the Lord and get answers that way and pray. And they said, okay, you guys get your censers. We'll get ours. And there was 250 guys that were on their side. And it was just Moses and Aaron on the other side. And so it was going to be against the two of them. Um, so the next day it, came, it happened because he tried to call, Moses tried to call a meeting with all of them. And I think it was Dathan's family said, we're not even coming. They didn't respect him at all. They said, we won't come up. They like lived in a different part of the camp. They wouldn't even come to the area. That's how disrespectful it was. But they were so like discouraged within themselves. They were yielding to their own evil reasoning, their own mind their own soul of what was possible god had such a big possibility to take them into the land even with giants there and so anyways they had this standoff the next morning and they said We're, we'll see like who's who's obeying god and who's not because uh moses would fall on his face and pray all the time he didn't even just pray for himself he was praying for these guys because he knew they were opposing god and so he fell on his face and they came out the next morning. They had all their sensors. Yes? I, I blew that. Um, just hold it for five more minutes. Okay? She's almost done. So they had all their sensors. And um, who was it that said to get away from their houses, their tents? They said, everybody step away. Because I know Aaron was the spokesman. And so the Lord spoke to Moses and told them, everybody get away from uh, Korah. And all his family members tents. and all his tents and everything. Because they lived in sections like neighborhoods where their tents were, even though they would travel, they were mobile. And so everybody get away from their stuff. Don't even touch their stuff. Like get away from them. And um, they all stood there and waited for an answer from God. They had their sensors. The, the ground actually opened up and like swallowed them. Even the children, like that's so sad. It's a good thing they went to heaven, but... Open up and then it and then it shut and let me let me continue for a second So it shut over them and everybody all the rest of the people were like hey, the ground's gonna swallow all of us They were scared. So everybody like just you can imagine like Pandemonium in a crowd like that almost appearing like a riot just chaos like people running away from this scene Because it looks like a, a massive earthquake, but then it closed back up over them He said if they die of a natural death then you'll know that they are right and that you guys should go back, that I'm not the leader. But if God appointed me as a leader over you people, I'm not self-appointed. I'm not trying to exalt myself as a prince over you. If, the, if God does something miraculous and they die before they're, before like just old age or a normal way of dying, then you'll know that they're rebelling against God. And so this happened as a huge sign to them when the ground, avoid the pit, the ground opened up, swallowed them back up, and then it says fire actually came and consumed the other guys, 250 guys that were holding those sensors. It consumed them. And um, the very next day, like even though this huge thing happened, like can you imagine like witnessing something like this? 
even the next day, the rest of the community of Israel still like came against Moses and said, you killed these men of God. You killed them. And they were complaining. And it was, it was like Moses, even though they were accusing him, he fell on his face again because he talked to God face to face. He fell on his face again and interceded, which just means he prayed. He talked to God for the people and said, please, God, do not come out uh, against these people, even though they're, they're accusing me of this. It's not true, but please, like, he was interceding. And so all these people start dying. A plague breaks out. It said over 14,000, it was 14,700 people ended up dying of a plague. I don't know what the, what the plague was. Yep, but it say. Moses or, uh, said to his brother Aaron, he said, go out with the censer and uh, like consecrate Party. the people. Yeah. And so as he was running, he was running in between because it was like a wave of this plague coming over people. He ran through the crowd with the censer and it caused forgiveness. It caused, it's like the, the evil plague. that was coming on the entire crowd, the entire community of these people was stopped right at that line of where, the, where Moses ran. And over 14,000 people died. Why, which is crazy. why was the plague coming on them? Because they were... They God were, was angry, right? God was angry. He was, he, and why was he? Because they didn't believe. And none of them actually were going to go into the promised land. That's what they were upset about. Because the Lord said, you didn't believe. And so now only your children are going to go in, not you. And so they didn't want to live in the wilderness for the so rest of their lives. So they complained... And God got angry at their complaining. Because it was it was an issue of them not believing God, even though yep. they could see him face to face. Now, God was dealing with people just in their flesh at this time, and he never changes. But we now have reborn spirits because of Jesus. And all the punishment and all of that stuff that comes on people due to sin, which I think is of darkness and the devil wanting to punish people. Because I know God is good. He doesn't have a shadow of turning in him. He's, he gives good gifts. All of that destruction that comes on people, um, that went on Jesus. That's what we learned about at Easter. And so that's why we don't have to sacrifice animals to cover sins. Uh, it says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There's life in the blood, even in animals' blood. And anyways, so even though this happened, they were dealing with people as an example in the flesh so they would actually be obedient and they could he could actually get them to the promised land at, the, at some point because now he deals with us in our spirits and we get a conviction within us and uh, we don't see the ground opening up and swallowing people but when you're just dealing with with people are either going to listen to you or not he wasn't even going to be able to get any of these people to the promised land and he stands outside of time he wants to bring them here, have them populate over the years. They're, they're obeying these standards that he's given them. They're worshiping God. They're separate from the rest of the world. He's able to bring the Messiah. And then all of us that are not Hebrew, we're able to actually grab a hold of Jesus by faith and become, it says, children of Abraham, which is become like them. them. We're chosen people as well because of our faith and our belief in Jesus.